All right, in this video here, we're just going to set up the blend shapes onto our receiver head. Um, and I want to show you the difference between Maya 2016 and Maya 2017, because Maya 2017 features some cool new features. Features some features? There we go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and I think that it makes uh, the blend shapes a lot more organized and easier to use. So just giving you the idea of how I would normally go about this in older versions of Maya first, and then what it would look like to do in Maya 2017. So in older versions of Maya, when I want to create this blend shape node, effectively I want to select all of my blend shapes um, at one time and pipe them all in uh, on the same blend shape node. So in order to do that, um, and to try to create some kind of meaningful layout, I would go through and I would probably make a big selection around my, let's just say my mouth shapes first. And uh, once that selects in, then I'd hold down shift and select all my nose shapes and then all of my brow shapes and finally my asymmetrical detail. And then shift select finally the receiver. Uh, from there, I'd be in my rigging menu and go to deform and blend shape. And really, all I need to worry about at the moment is probably just the basic settings. If I reset the settings, that's probably fine. And I'd probably give this a name and I would just call this, um, I usually precede it with BS for blend shapes, not what BS usually means. Um, and we'll just call this face, right? Or face shapes or something like that. Um, the advanced node right now, uh, front of chain is fine. Um, and because we don't need to really worry about how this is being piped in onto an existing rig uh, later on when we uh, connect the receiver to the actual geometry of the of the finished mesh we will need to worry about where that sits uh, but for now the front of chain is fine and we'll just say create so we have all of those here now listed in our inputs right um, and you can see all the names and that those names are nice because it makes it really easy to read and I could go through and I could select any individual one of these, for instance, and enable it. And you can see that it's working there. You can see through the green of this mesh. Um, and if I were to go into my blend shape uh, editor, which is found under Windows Animation Editor, blend shape. Uh, this hopefully loads up somewhere here. There it is over on my other screen. So I'll just bring this over here. Uh, I'm just going to set this back to the way that it normally looks, which is a um, a layout that looks like this. All right, so this is what you normally get. Um, and as you can see here, we do have all the blend shapes. Um, many of you have probably seen this before. This is fairly elementary stuff when it comes to Maya. Um, but it is hard to read all of the names. Um, I mean, fortunately, some of these names are short enough where you can actually read them, but things like this one here, upper lip, roll, left, it is getting cut off. And there's no nice way of actually making these wider, right? Um, I am able to make keys in here. I am able to, you know, start to play around with those values and start seeing the effect of it on, on the mesh. And I could add several things together and get some kind of weird result like that. Um, but that's not really all that uh, useful as an editor. The other option which I had just to begin with when I opened this up for the first time was uh, going to options orientation and changing it from vertical to horizontal. And that refers to the orientation of the sliders. And uh, when there's quite a few blend shapes like this, it takes Maya uh, just a little bit of time to process all that. And you can see now I have something that looks, uh, you know, the sliders kind of make some sense going from left to right. The information is pretty much the same, and the size of these name uh, fields are the same as well. The trouble is also that if I want to add another blend shape into this list, um, I can't just easily add it directly into this list that we see here. I'd end up having to create another blend shape node, and then that starts to create problems when the two nodes compete with each other uh, to be able to give you a single uh, overall predictable result on your target mesh. So basically, long story short, um, in the older way of setting up blend shapes in Maya, effectively 
you want to get all of the blend shapes that you're going to use in one fell swoop and plug them in all at once on a single blend shape node. All right, so that's the easiest way to do it. And if you all of a sudden decide to go in and uh, change a blend shape or add a blend shape, changing the blend shape doesn't really matter, but if you're gonna add a new blend shape in um, that you need to get on here, then, you, then generally I end up deleting that blend shape node, selecting all of my heads again, including the new one, and then creating a new blend shape node. Uh, which can be a little bit problematic if you've already created connections based on the previously existing setup. Okay, so that's old stuff. Now with my 2017, I want to show you um, how I would do this in the new setup. So here we have the exact same scene. I'm in my 2017 now. And um, there is a cool new blend shape editor in my 2017 which is enabled pretty much the same way as we saw before. If we go to Windows um, and go to Animation Editors, it's going to be our Shape Editor. So instead of being called Blend Shape, it's just called the Shape Editor. And when I open that up, this is what I get. All right, so right now it doesn't look too different because I haven't plugged anything in yet. But let's go ahead. I'm just going to put this over onto the other screen, um, off screen for now. And what I'm going to do is... Um, start plugging in my blend shapes. So let's just say, let's just take it, let's make it really simple to start with. Let's just say that I want to take just one shape and I'm going to create a blend shape between that and the receiver node. So I'll go to rigging, deform, blend shape. Again, I'm just keeping the defaults pretty much. Um, this deformation order is set to automatic now, which is uh, a little bit different than what we saw before. Uh, but that's the default. And I call this BS, um, and this one I'll just call mouth shapes. All right. So I'll say create. And now if I look at my shape editor, nothing has happened here. But what I've noticed in this uh, typically is that the um, shape editor doesn't always um, update. So I usually end up going in having um, a custom shelf here and um, basically relaunching the, the shape editor each time, just so I don't have to go into my um, file menu every time to do this. I come in and I'll, in my custom shelf uh, enabled, I'll hold down control and shift and click on shape editor and that pops it into my custom shelf. All right, so now we can see that that is updated. And um, if I play around with this. You can see, there we go. It's giving that sort of uh, sne uh, sneer. Now, what if I want to add in the other one? All right. So if I click on the right sneer or the right upper lip up, um, I can go in to my options here. Um, make sure I have my blend shape selected, the blend shape node itself, and go to add selection as target. And now that gets added in as well. Now this is important because um, this is different from what we saw in Maya 2016, where it was not easy to add in uh, blend shape targets uh, or additional blend shapes onto the same blend shape node. This is really easy here inside of Maya 2017. So um, what I'm going to do here, and you'll see that also first off, just for the sake of example, that they do they're nicely additive. Um, and they don't get in the way of each other. I also have this option here where if I want to basically reduce the overall uh, contribution of this blend shape, I can, which is quite cool. So that's just the overall contribution. Now I'm going to go in and um, I'll just delete these two. So I could click on the trash can to delete them. I still have this same uh, blend shape, but I'm not going to call it mouth shapes for now. I could rename it if I wanted to. Uh, but let's just go ahead and, and delete everything so that we get nothing left. And you'll see that that's gone gray, but it hasn't actually left the shape editor. Just, I think this is just a bug that will probably be fixed in coming versions. Um, not everything clears out or adds in unless you reload the shape editor. So that's just what I did there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by grabbing just all of the mouth shapes first. And I'm going to go in and add that on there. So deform, blend shape. And it's going to add this blend shape to um, my custom shelf as well. All right, so that's been added in. And I'll go into my blend shape editor. 
and oh, it got added in as mouth shapes again because that was the default that I had set in here. Um, so let's just I could re I could rename that if I wanted to, but uh, let's just rename it here, and we're going to call this um, BS face shapes. Okay, and now I have this big long list. One thing that you can see that's totally different here is that I can actually expand the name column now, which means I can actually read everything, which is really super helpful. Um, I'm going to grab everything that's here, that's all the mouth shapes, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these into its own group. So I'm going to create an add a folder here. Um, and with those selected, when I clicked on that, they got added into this group. And we're just going to call this our uh, BS mouth shapes. All right. So that really helps with the organization. Now let's step back, click back on our face shapes again, and we'll go in and we'll grab our nose and I'll shift click on my receiver and we're going to add that in as a blend shape again, but we're going to use not the blend shape here. We're just going to go in and say, um, add selection as target, create add selection as target. And just showing you the, um, the options there is just using the same type of, um, uh, of, of blend shape um, automatic that we were using before. So we'll say apply and close. And now it's added in all those nose shapes. And we'll go in and we'll grab that. We'll click on the group and it's going to add them to group and we'll call this BS uh, nose shapes. And finally, We'll go in and do this for our um, upper face, basically. Create, add selection as target. Put them into a group. We'll call this uh, BS, let's call it brow shapes, even though it has the eyes in there as well. All right, so that's really convenient because now everything's really super easy to see. Um, I'm just gonna add this last one in and it's gonna sort of sit on its own. This is our asymmetrical detail. Um, I don't necessarily need a uh, folder for that one. I might create one later, we'll see. But what's cool about this is that it's so simple and it's so easy to add things uh, and keep track of them and have everything nicely organized. And then also, you know, if I take a look at the results here, um, if I take an eyebrow squeeze, for instance, right, and I add in, that one's kind of hard to see. Let's just take something that's a little bit easier to see, like the eye there, and I add in the nose shapes, right, and I add in a mouth shape, Right, they're all working exactly as the way we would expect them to. They're not competing against each other. Um, we're getting the result that we want, and they're nicely organized, which is really totally awesome. So, um, and the other thing that I mentioned before, which was that I can turn down the overall contribution of the blend shape. Well, I can do that for each group now as well. So if I had a complex mouth shape, and I just, for whatever reason, decided that I wanted to, you know, turn it, turn down the influence of the whole mouth, then I can do that on the group level as well. So that's really cool too. Now, as we advance through here, we will eventually start uh, keyframing uh, some of our uh, blend shapes, and we can do that in here as well. And not only that, but there's some really awesome features in Maya 2017 for editing our blend shapes after we've already added them in. Um, or even creating a brand new shape from a base shape and creating a blend shape from it while it's being added to the overall end result. So just some really tremendous enhancements in Maya 2017 uh, for this whole workflow. So I just wanted to give kind of a basic uh, layout of how I'm going about my um, the, the really simple part of just setting up the blend shapes into the blend shape node. Um, and then obviously there's some very big differences between Maya 2017 and everything that came before Maya 2017. So I hope this has been of help and we'll take a look at something a bit more advanced in the next tutorial.